Hello, I'm here in Zurich, Switzerland. My guest today is Thomas Landis. He's the head of F10 and the startup coach at Six Group. Hi, Thomas. It's great to have you on the podcast. Thank you for being with us here in yeah. Zurich. Thank you. So today we'll talk a little bit about Swiss fintech ecosystem, corporate innovation, hackathons, and the acceleration programs. But let's start and briefly talk about the F10. So the organization started in 2015. It's sponsored by the Six Group and has experienced a tremendous growth and recognition since then. Thomas, what are the main goals of F10 and what are you trying to achieve here? Yeah. So maybe I have to start a little bit uh, mm -hmm. more back in the years. So I actually, uh, you need to know Six. You know, Six is, is a company which is owned by 140 banks which operate in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And uh, very often there are some things in the market which doesn't make sense that the bank is doing it on their own. Uh, and that, so that's why actually Six was founded. That's why mm -hmm. Six uh, has, for example, they run the stock exchange in Switzerland, the stock run uh, interbank clearing payments and things like that. So, so let's go back to you, your question. So if you look at Six as a stock market, for example, I mean, you do have a structural innovation problem. Mm -hmm. You need to be compliant. You need to be uh, very stable on your systems means you have to do mm -hmm. stock exchange every uh, day, uh, meaning you cannot just try and error. So therefore you have a structural innovation problem because you hire people who make sure that the status quo doesn't change and the, the systems doesn't change. And therefore you need somebody you can somehow test and try something with. And that's uh, one, some years ago we found that, well, actually we, we have a little bit a problem in being quick and easy, uh, especially in the payments market when PayPal was rising, mm -hmm. when there were rumors that uh, Amazon and uh, Apple and uh, all those companies go into the, this direction and there, that's why we, we found that actually an accelerator mm -hmm. and so we need something like an external construct to do innovation. Mm -hmm. And uh, since when we started to actually plan it, we learned quickly that once again, it doesn't make sense if we just do it on our own mm -hmm. for six, because for the startup, if you want to be, uh, or, or if you want to attract the most attractive startups from all over the globe, you must give them options and those options are actually not only working with six or not working only with this specific band. So therefore we said, well, let's open it up, whatever we do and invite our, uh, our, our stockholders. And uh, so this is actually, it's not, it's not owned by six. It's not mm -hmm. mainly sponsored by six. It is sponsored by its corporate members. So we are set up as an association under the Swiss law, meaning we have corporate partners like six is, mm -hmm. yes, is one of the important sponsors, but we also have PwC, Bank Julius Baer, uh, Raiffeisen Switzerland, uh, Zürcher Kantonalbank, which is a retail bank. We just have announced that we have PostFinance, the largest retail bank in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, also insurance companies who back us like Generali, Balawas, and so on. And all those companies, they have understood that do have a structural innovation problem because they have to be compliant, they have to be mm -hmm. uh, reliable and things like that, and that they hinder that to innovate. So therefore we have said, well, let's collaborate together to make Switzerland uh, more innovative if it comes mm -hmm. to fintech, but on the other hand, also give the best right. startups the better options mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, come into mm -hmm. this program because they have options to collaborate with different kind of startups. Okay. Uh, so with different kind of yeah, sounds like it's a mutual beneficial for all of them, the ecosystem, the startups and the corporates, because usually they, it takes, it might take years for them to develop a solution or so a startup can come in and try to build something pretty quickly. So it seems like everybody benefits. All right, so let's move on to the more fun part, uh, the hackathons. So I had a chance to participate in my first hackathon a few months ago in Vienna, Austria, that was organized by F10. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you guys did an excellent job and provided the environment for collaboration and innovation. For those who don't know, what is the usual format of a hackathon and what, are, what is the main goal? Yep. So the main goal is actually for us to create startups uh, mm -hmm. which which work on a topic which is relevant for the banks and the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So meaning those challenges you have uh, yeah. uh, seen mm -hmm. at the hackathon, they were not just given up because we think they are mm -hmm. cool to work on. We saw they are topics which will be relevant for the banks or the, which are relevant for the banks. And therefore we set up a platform. This is basically what we do. And the platform is this 48 hour where we bring together people in out of banks those are the guys we target mm -hmm. out of banks and insurances, which see in their everyday work that there is a wide spot where they think there could be a solution or they just think there must be a better way like mm -hmm. we do it today. 
And so the hackathon then is the platform. Uh, so we start normally on a Friday at five o'clock mm -hmm. and we end on Sunday on five o'clock. And in this platform, we try to bring in those people with the great ideas, bring in some talents who can develop something quickly mm -hmm. or who would like just to work on ideas. And we from F10 help them with coaching then really to focus what is really the problem you try to solve for which customer. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and if you think of this, it's very, very difficult very often to find out so mm -hmm. who has really the problem in a company like, uh, for example, UBS with 35,000 global employees. So who in this UBS has this problem that how can you make sure that this person does understand they do have a problem and that they high priority. Yes. So this is all what we try to give them uh, at the hackathon. Mm -hmm. Very important is to understand at this hackathon, we just are experts on the process and try to bring them from that's the problem, that's the solution, how it could look like in an event which makes them fun. So we want to actually show the people, hey, being an entrepreneur might be fun because do not forget those people coming out of bank insurance, they have very high opportunity costs mm -hmm. if they're starting a startup. And you yeah. must be, especially in Switzerland, insane to start your startup because we have 2.5% unemployment rate. If you have half a brain, you find a fantastic job in finances in yeah. Switzerland. So therefore, it, it must be very attractive to be an entrepreneur. And mm -hmm. this is what it's not at the moment. And we try somehow at the hackathon to have a great event. So everybody thinks, well, this is a great idea. This is how it could be solved. Yeah. Okay, what can I do? Yeah. Can I quit my job on Monday? Okay. Yeah, I feel like this is exactly what happened to me coming from a more corporate environment. Like actually coming to Vienna just completely changed my, my path and I'm just yeah. pursuing something Sorry else. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually as excited. I really love that. Do you have any tips or advice for future participants? What does it really take to win a hackathon? Uh, it needs to have a great team. Mm -hmm. You need to have a lot of fun and you really must understand your problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, very important is also do not fall in love with your solution, fall in love with the problem you're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, your problem you try to solve. I think it's so relevant. Mm -hmm. It's so relevant that people started to think about, yes, there is something wrong in capitalism. Maybe it has a relationship to uh, democracy, mm -hmm. uh, like, sure. like we learned. Mm -hmm. uh, and there find other people who are trying to think on this problem, look at it from different kind of angles and then have a great yeah. uh, idea how you could solve it. And of course, you also must be lucky that the jury is uh, smart enough to understand actually from and you must be very well prepared mm -hmm. and of course our platform helps there at the hackathon to present this mm -hmm. problem and the solution for it in, in three minutes and then compete against other 25 other great ideas like we had in Vienna or in, or in, Vienna or in, in, in Zurich we had even 37 prototypes yeah. coming out of it where, which were uh, very good ideas. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see all the ideas and how yeah, people come together. It's definitely a good experience. Um, highly recommend participating in future hackathons. So let's move on to the acceleration program. So you have a six month prototype to product program, but it's quite unique because it's kind of long and it's focused or more a little bit more on the early stage yes. startups. How does the program really work? So, yeah. Well, let's explain quickly why it's so long and yeah. why do we focus on early stage mm -hmm. startups. And I have here to explain two things. There are two kinds of accelerators in the world. The majority of accelerators, the startup boot camps, uh, the tech star, they all have an investment goal, meaning they invest early in ideas and they think maybe one of 10 or 100 ideas will be very successful and this gives me actually the kickback for everything. Mm -hmm. We have another belief. We are looking for people who believe that the financial infrastructure in Switzerland should be ready for the future. So therefore we targeting banks and corporates like SIX who do understand, yes, we need to move the banks into a new uh, area. Mm -hmm. and out of those beliefs, what we do, we find the self-motivated guys in the banks and we find the self-motivated guys in the organizations uh, which really want to drive innovation. So now the problem is banks and insurance companies, like I explained before, are not naturally innovators. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a big problem, meaning if you bring a great solution to a bank, they say, yeah, this is fantastic. I would like to implement it. Uh, our next release is in three months. Uh, 
well, but you need to actually adapt this and adapt this and adapt this and can we have it in green? Uh, the startup normally says, yes, we could do that, but it costs about 145,000 euros. Are you willing to pay that? And the banks say, of course not. So, and, and therefore say, well, okay, then please go home, do your homework and come back in, in six months because then you have the next release lot. Uh, so, and this is just a, not working very often, meaning those sales cycles to banks are so extremely long. And so we said, well, if we bring in those teams who have been hopefully at the hackathon or at another problem, the corporate have, if mm -hmm. it comes to innovation, into a program, we actually lower the burden of having those teams going in a, in a field where nobody wants to work with them because they're working on a topic which is relevant for the banks and them. So now, in those six months, what it happens again? In the first uh, months, we focus on what is really the problem, trying to understand what is the problem from the corporate and how could that problem the startup has looked at fit together? Is it really the same or does it go in another direction? In the second months, it's then more about, okay, this is now the problem, but what is the solution? What kind of team do I need to bring this solution to the market? Uh, what kind of sales channels do I probably need to set up? Do I have a sales team? What kind of risks do I have? What kind of business model should I set up that is beneficially for me and bringing me a revenue, things like that, and so on. Meaning then we make sure that they are compliant. And, and. So at the end of the six months program, our startups have two things achieved. They are ready to do mm. revenue and they are ready to get investment. Mm. And if you look at it, what does what is needed for a startup to be able to generate revenue with banks, it's very broad. Your product must be finished, your set technology must be proven, meaning a compliance officer, risk officer must say, yes, mm. we allow this solution to be on our core banking solution, for example. Uh, you must have the right team behind with the right skills to be able to execute a proof of concept or a product into a, a bank. You need to have the finances to do that and you need also to be uh, very agile because the banks normally change their minds very, very often. And this is what we actually guarantee to our corporates and to the others for all those teams who come through our program and who have successfully finished our program that those teams are ready to take uh, investments and that they are ready to take uh, actually or generate revenue which means they have a proven product and a proven market. Yeah. Sounds like there's obviously a lot of variables for making a startup success but the program itself with your <coughs> blueprint is a great way to move forward. Let's move on to the more broader topic uh, fintech ecosystem in Switzerland. Um, can you walk us briefly how fintech ecosystem evolved in Switzerland over the past few years? Uh, Let's explain quickly what an ecosystem is from my point of view. Sure. So we talk about the same. I think an ecosystem is, is when something happens, nobody has under control. Meaning uh, if some people starting to talk to others, which have not met uh, on somebody who has set this up. This is from our point of view, what an ecosystem is like. And if you just look at it, what happened here in F10 is actually, we started very low and said, well, let's have a location where people from bank and startups can meet, give them a little bit of coaching and give them some beer so they can talk at the same level. And uh, also make sure that they get some coaching and that we are opening up actually our contacts to those and invite them to different kind of networking events and let's see what's happening. And this is actually what happens. So what happened in that network in the last three years when we started? Uh, well, if you look at just from an F10 point of view, we started with three members, six, mm -hmm. Julius Baer and uh, PwC. Now, yesterday we announced two more, now we are 11. And we have one, we have two more in the pipeline, which we are not allowed to announce yet. I mean, companies do understand on the other hand, you see how many collaborations have started with that. Uh, it's, we had like 50 startups going through our program so far, plus minus. They got investment. Some of our corporate partners, for example, like six have started up fintech early stage uh, investment funds. Uh, and things are happening around that, meaning the ecosystem starts uh, or started really once we offer this platform. Uh, very often we see teams coming into a program uh, or as soon as they got accepted for a program, they then quit their job. Meaning we give them a little bit of security and saying, well, 
once you come into a program, you have exactly you, you have validated pretty well the market because there are 12 corporates behind who have an interest in you. Uh, this means you're not taking such a big risk on really quitting a very high priced uh, or well paid job. Yeah, and this is actually what, what an ecosystem is for us mm -hmm. and it's starting to grow. Uh, we also learned that, well, okay, after our programs, you need to offer something. That's why we started with co-working. We didn't do the co-working because we wanted actually to, to, to have another revenue stream. It's, it's actually on the self cost in the city of Zurich, to, uh, how we rent those in. But it's, we want to bring those startups which go out of our program still close to actually the ecosystem. Meaning, mm -hmm. once they finalize the product, they need to focus on delivering, but they should not forget about sales and that's why we want to have them here as well. So this is a little bit how it involved. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. Well, like just more general, like how is the Swiss regulator responding to all this innovation? Do, do you feel like there's a lot of collaboration from, from between them and the startups? How, how is that going? The regulator? The regulator, yeah. Here, once again, also explain quickly how the Swiss regulator works sure. compared, for example, to the English or the British uh, regulator. The mandate from the Swiss regulator is passive. Okay. So they need to regulate solutions only if they are in the market. Mm -hmm. They have to be uh, technology uh, neutral. Uh, meaning if me as a, as a startup, I have something which is not regulated, I have to approach the regulator and tell them this is what we're trying to do and the regulator sits together. With the, with the starter or with the corporate and looks at it, how is it, how can it be regulated? So that they try not to over-regulate the market and they only do regulate if it's needed because there would be a risk or something against the law. So they're very passive on that and they do it on a good thing. For example, every batch, uh, FINMA, uh, the regulator comes in here, they explain us uh, uh, or the startups, how do, should they approach them what is regulated, what are the newest rulings and things like that. But it's always actually, I think it's, you could also say it's agile on the projects with the startups. Of course, they have a big enforcement team, which for example, at the moment, they're mainly looking at ICOs, which have been uh, done, but they're not looking at it like, hey, they have been done wrong. They're just looking at it. Is the regulation correct? What we have done? Have they followed uh, the, the law? And are there any, like, uh, well, it, it, is there any way, anybody cheating on the market? And they're trying to find that out. So, mm -hmm. okay. so I think, honestly, I think they're doing a good job here. Okay. Being uh, passively mm -hmm. uh, agile. Yeah, that's definitely a very different approach, but it seems like it's it's working and it's successful. Yes. All right, our, our last question for today. What recommendations do you have for international fintechs that are looking to enter the Swiss market? Uh, from my perspective, I feel like Swiss market is it's, it's a little bit close in the sense that if you want to have a client who's Swiss based, it might take a little bit of time to develop a relationship. Do you feel like it makes more sense for an international startup to join some kind of program like F10 or Smarter, or they should still try to make it work on their own <coughs> with, with the, the clients, yeah. getting clients from Switzerland? Uh, it sure makes sense to join a program. I'm not saying this only because uh, mm -hmm. uh, I run one of those programs. It's, it's mainly nobody's waiting for startups, <laughs> unfortunately, especially not the banks who do not have a uh, any time for something fancy which has not been went to the, in their banks. So you need somebody who's uh, filtering out for the banks, those who are relevant. Uh, if, if, you, if you're planning on coming to Switzerland, be aware that living costs here are extremely high. So you need to have a good funding uh, to really start your business in Switzerland. Uh, I mean, you, you learned yourself when you've yeah. been here. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, once you've achieved here, uh, you can scale quickly through all over Europe. Of, co of course, we have different regulations, for example, if it comes to PSD2, mm -hmm. uh, but they are not uh, very different because our mm -hmm. banks are global as well. And if you have managed to actually win the Swiss market, you have actually it easier to win other markets as well. I think Switzerland is also a good market for fintechs uh, because it's, you have a good overview uh, for example, I need to win UBS, for example, and they have maybe 20% of the market customers. Mm -hmm. And then I need to win another bank and have maybe 40. And if I mm -hmm. compare it to Germany, how many banks they have, 
uh, or yeah. and th this was actually one of the reasons why some of the things in Switzerland are already further developed. For example, we do have a a peer-to-peer -peer system called TWIN, mm -hmm. which has more than 1 million active users. And this is quite a lot for a country like Switzerland with 8 million uh, mm -hmm. uh, people living here. Uh, and they have more than 80 banks which have already signed up for that program or for this solution. And people are using it and starting to grow uh, expansionality. And this is actually good. Or well, another thing is also we have a, a, a digital ID which uh, is called Swiss ID, which is uh, again a collaboration between all the banks and big players here in Switzerland. And this is actually a good thing because players are uh, willing to collaborate. And this is also maybe something a bit in our culture. Look at Switzerland, we have four different kinds of languages. Of course, yes, this will make it a little bit trouble to actually execute the product, but never, never mind the languages. Uh, but what's important is since we have four languages and we had it all time and we are a small tiny country we are used to do collaboration so we do know how to deal with problems I mean why has the Bundesrat uh, Willy Bura just met Donald Trump yesterday because he's actually this person who brings them together with Iran this is a mandate and this is really in the DNA of the Swiss and this is also here if it comes to business mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah. which is really beneficial for the startup, which needs to collaborate or wants to collaborate. Thanks. Yeah. Sounds like a Swiss is a great place to be for fintechs. So, all right, uh, that's all right. Thank you, Thomas, for your time. Uh, appreciate it. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, well, th thank, thank you for your time, Thomas. Right. Yeah. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Glad to be here.